Okay, so we're ready to number one, now we're going to move on to number two. So here we're already given our fraction. We're going to use this fraction information to what we need to do. So this is saying I have four tenths. So I'm going to go ahead and put my, my decimal place value mat. And how many tenths do I need? Well, I need four of them. So I'm going to get my rods, which help demonstrate my tenths. And this is a one tenth, two tenth, three tenth, four tenth. Right here is a representation of my four tenths. So now I'm going to go ahead and I know how it looks. I am now going to use this as my guide. I have four tenths, so I know that this is my fraction. So I know that my numerator <clears throat> is the number of my my number of rods selected or colored. So how many should I color in? Four. So I'm going to go ahead and color in four. I'm going to go ahead and use a different marker. Here, one, two, three, four. I have four that I colored. Now, my denominator always represents my total. So how many total do I have? Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this fraction is correct. So now how would I write this in a decimal form? Well, let me start off here. Let me go ahead and draw my place value chart. Do I have any holes? Is this whole thing covered? No. Nope. Remember my tenths represents my rods and I had how many rods? Well, I have one, two, three, four rods. So I have four. And I don't have any units or any hundredths. So my decimal is, remember I'm extending my decimal. So under my decimal I'm putting a one and a zero and this demonstrates that this is my tenths place. So here, now I'm gonna go here. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy what I just did. What did I sketch? Well, I drew four rods, so I need to sketch four rods. My decimal was just like this, so I know my decimal is zero holes and four tenths. Now let's look at our 21 hundredths. So again, I'm going to get this out. And I'm going to look at my 21 hundredths. So I'm going to look here. I'm going to put 21 hundredths because it gave it to me in decimal. Oh, sorry. That did not. It gave it to me in a fraction. I have a fraction of 21 hundredths. So I know that I need to have how many tenths? Well, let's Let's look at that. I'm going to use units. Should I get 21 units? If I'm looking at hundreds, I know that it's units. Should I get 21 units or should I do something else that helps me out? Well, yeah, I should get two rods. This is one rod. This is two rods. And how many units do I need? Just one. This represents my 21 hundredths. So now let's go back here and sketch that out. I had two rods and one unit. Now instead of coloring it, I'm going to use my, my grid paper. I had used this one before. So here, we do the same thing. And these are my units. So I need to color in how many units? I need to color in 21 units. That's what I'm going to do before, after I've drawn in my lines with this grid paper. I'm going to make these into small units. Okay. 
Okay, so how many did I have to color in? Well, I know I have two rods. So I'm going to go ahead and color in my two rods. One, two, and I'll have one unit. So I have two rods and one unit. So now I'm going to go ahead and write this out on a piece of paper, and I'm going to look for the decimal. Using my diagram that I have here, I'm going to try it out here on my decimal here. Do I have any whole numbers? Nope. So I'm drawing off my one tenth. Hundred. I do not have any whole numbers. I only have smaller than, so I have a zero. Do I have any rods? Yes. How many did I have? I had two, because remember our two rods represent tenths. Did I have any units or hundredths? Yes, I only had one. So this right here is my one. So this is twenty-one hundredths. Now go ahead and do the rest on your own. Okay. So I'm on, now I'm on decimal subtractions one page two. I'm only going to do a few of these, so I'm going to let you guys know here. Then I'm looking at number seven. I'm noticing here that these are units, while these are our, what? They're rods or tenths. So let's look here. I'm going to look and change this to fraction and this to a decimal. So I'm already going to go ahead and start. Do I have any whole numbers here? Yes, I have one hole because the whole thing is shaded. What about here? How much is shaded here? Well, instead of having to count every single little one, I'm going to count rods here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is what? 77. But this is our decimal. So now here in our fraction, we're going to use a mixed fraction. A mixed fraction member has a whole number and a decimal included in it. So let's look here. Do I have a whole? Yes, I have one whole. Now let's look just at here. How many parts are shaded? Remember, our numerator is our parts shaded or selected. How many are shaded? 77. Our denominator should be our total. How many are here in all? That's right, 100. So now I want you to think of this as money. If I were to write this as money, how would I write this down? Well, it would be one whole dollar and 77 cents. So I would have one whole, my decimal, separating my whole number from my decimal, and 77 hundredths. Now let's look at number eight. I have my tenth, so I know that it's gonna end in my tenth place. So let's look here. Do I have any whole numbers? Yes. Again, even though it looks different, this has units and these has rods, the whole thing is still shaded. So this still represents one whole. How many is shaded here? That's right, only two tenths. Only two rods are shaded. So now let's write this as a fraction. Again, this is a mixed fraction. I have one whole. And I have what? Two rods shaded, because that's my numerator, the amount shaded, out of how many? This time it's not 100. This time it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This time it is 10. Now I'm going to go over to my decimal. If I were to think of this again as money, I know that this I would have one whole dollar and 20 and two tenths. Sorry. This would be one and two tenths. 